In this video, we'll design and print the base for our moon lamp. First, let's set up some parameters. Now, I know our moon diameter is 5 inches, which is 127 millimetres. So let's add a parameter for that along with the radius. I also know the LED heatsink is 50 millimeters diameter. Now, when I printed the moon, I made a gap of five millimeters and a lip of five millimeters. So we'll add some parameters for that as well. And let's also add our hole diameter and radius. So that's probably enough to be getting on with. Let's add a moon model. We'll create a new component for the moon. And in this new component, we'll create a sphere. And we'll use our moon diameter for the size of the sphere. Uh, we'll shell this sphere so it matches our 3D printed moon. Now we need to create an approximation to what we did in Blender in Fusion 360. So the first thing to do will be to cut out a hole for the heatsink in the bottom of the moon. So we'll create a sketch in the XY plane and to this we'll add a circle and we'll use our hole diameter for this circle. So we'll finish this sketch and then we'll extrude and we'll extrude to our sphere and we'll use the cut operator. Now we now need to create the lip around this hole. Um, we'll need a plane to create a sketch on. Now this will need to be the correct distance on the sphere from the XY plane. Now you can calculate this by taking the square root of the squared moon radius minus the squared hole radius. So let's create a parameter for this. So we want the square root of the moon radius minus our whole radius.
Now we can create an offset plane with that distance from the origin. So let's create a sketch on our new plane. We'll project in the hole and we'll offset this curve by the lip. Finish the sketch. And now we'll extrude up to the sphere and we'll use the join operator. So we now have our moon component completed. Um, let's make it look like the moon by assigning it a colour. So that's the moon part done. We'll now create a new component for the bottom of the base. Now I'm going to make the base the same diameter as the moon. So we'll start off with a sketch and we'll add a circle and we'll use the moon diameter. We'll need to extrude a wall for the base so I'll offset this curve by two millimeters to give us a wall thickness and I'd also like to have some air vents in the base. So let's create a sketch for the air vent. Now we also need to make a support for the heatsink and the LED. Uh, I'm going to have to keep this quite small so I can fit the electronics around it. So let's create a rectangle around the centre and we'll make this fairly small. So let's finish this sketch and start extruding. So we'll extrude down by two millimeters for the base. We'll turn the sketch back on and we'll cut out the slot for the air vent. and then create a circular pattern to repeat that. So we use pattern type feature, pick the extrusion for the axis, so for the object, we'll pick our extrusion, and for the axis, we'll pick the Z axis and we'll have 11 of these. So that's our slots cut out. Now we need to bring in our PCB to see how tall we need to make our base. So I've actually got two versions of the PCB. 
a version one and a version two. So I'll bring both of these in just so we can um, fall back on version one if version two doesn't work. So we'll just manually position these. Now we can extrude the wall of our base. Now it looks like 27 millimeters should do the job, so we'll just use that. Um, now let's bring in the heat sink and the LED. Let's work out how tall we need to make the support. So we'll extrude that and we'll just try 20 millimeters to begin with. I think that should give us enough clearance. If we position the LED in the heat sink, see there's plenty of room for our PCB and the heat sink. So we can now move on to the top of our base. So we'll create a new component for the top. And we'll create a sketch for this using this top surface of the base bottom. So we'll project in both of these circles. Now we need to create a hole for our moon to slot into. So let's create a circle and we'll use hole diameter. Now we're going to use a friction fit to make the top of the base clip onto the bottom of the base. So we'll create a lip around the outside will also reinforce this inner part of the top by creating a lip around this area. So we'll offset this circle by two millimeters and we'll also offset this circle by two millimeters. Now I also want to have slots in the top of the base to allow heat to escape. 
So let's sketch those in now as well. So we'll hide the base and let's build a construction line. And now we can create a centre rectangle here and we'll specify 20 and 2 millimetres. So that's our sketching done for the top of the base. We'll now do the extruding. So let's bring back in our base so we can see what we're doing. So we need to extrude the top by two millimeters. And then if we turn the sketch back on, we can extrude both of these lips by minus two millimeters. And we can also cut out the slot. Now we'll repeat the slot in a circular pattern. So we choose pattern type features. We'll select the extrusion, select the axes, and we'll have 20 of these if we select the correct axis. So that's the slots cut out from the top of our base. I'm also going to chamfer the hole entry so the moon slides in. So we'll modify chamfer, select this vertice and use two millimeters. So that's our top finished. Let's position the moon in the correct place and see how everything will look. I can see immediately that I have the hole with the wrong size. So let's go and fix that in our sketch. So what we've done wrong is here, we've done the whole diameter, but we've missed off the lip. If we finish our sketch now, you can see our hole is now large enough. We just need to align the moon with it. So that's better. Uh, the moon should slide in nicely into our hole and the chamfer we we'll slide in slightly more. So let's turn on everything else. So our base. You can see with the section analysis, there should be plenty of room. Let's switch on a slightly different view. So we can see both our version 1 PCB and our version 2 will fit easily into the base. We will have to use some hot glue to support the heatsink and maybe 3D print some kind of additional structure to keep it in place. 
then I think we're probably ready to export and print. But before we do that, let's just visualize what our moon lamp will actually look like. So I'm going to 3D print using wood filament. So let's make our base look like it's wooden. And we can also make our moon look like a moon. So if we edit this appearance and we go to advanced in this color drop down, we can choose image and we can upload a moon texture. And if we edit this, we can fix the appearance by changing the sample size to match the circumference of our moon and half the circumference of our moon. So pi times 127, which is 398 or 399. And half of that is around 200. And then we also need to change our projection on the moon so that it uses a spherical projection. And to pick an axis, and we want the z axis. And there you can see our moon with its nice wooden base. So we'll export the STL for the bottom of the base and the top of the base, print them, and then we'll see if it fits together. So the uh, print has finished. Um, I've had to hot glue uh, this part of the print because it uh, didn't quite extrude properly. Um, but the rest of the print looks pretty good. So um, let's see if it all fits together. So this is version one of my um, electronics. And let's see, it seems to fit okay. Uh, along with the heat sink and LED. And the lid fits nicely onto the base. So let's uh, bring in the moon and slide that into position. And let's see how this looks when we actually power it up. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, in the next video, we'll apply a wood stain to the base and varnish it. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.